This chart shows models' hip sizes at the top modeling agencies in the United States. Here's Bella Hadid. Here's Kendall Jenner. Here's Ashley Graham. I wrote a program that scraped these measurements from hundreds of models' online comp cards, which are used to book fashion shoots. It's not news that almost all models are way thinner than the average person. But what's going on here? Where are all the sizes in the middle? I'm Cleo Abram. I work at Vox Media, and I'm also a model. I teamed up with my friend and fellow model Amber Tolliver to explore the strange world of in-between sizing in fashion. I have been in every category possible <laughs> throughout my career. I started when I was 15, so I was naturally very thin. From there, I moved to plus size, gained weight, and joined that board for about five years. That didn't really fit who I was anymore, and so I switched back to straight size, so that's where I am now. Like the stereotype, most models have very thin hip sizes. There's also a growing group of successful plus size models. We found there's virtually no one in between. There are exceptions, but that's a pretty big divide. The six, the eights, the tens, you know, we're, we're in-betweeners, and there's no space for those girls. That's a huge missed business opportunity. One recent study tracked how women responded to and rated marketing materials with models of different sizes. For well-established brands, they found that models' size didn't really change anything. But for new brands, the women in the studies preferred average size models. And that makes sense. We're all trying to buy clothes that fit us, after all. It's not a big social statement. It's a matter of being able to shop effectively. This whole idea of size diversity, the conversation has started, but the execution still needs to you know, be followed through with. It's hard because even plus-size models are way off. Ashley Graham on a runway? She's incredible and an important figure in size diversity. And also, her waist is a full five inches smaller than the average American woman. 67% of women in the US are a size 14 and higher. I, went, I remember the day I went home and I told my mom that I switched to the plus board. She was like, well, what the hell does that make me? And I was like, I don't know, I don't have answers for you. It wasn't always this way. The first models were meant to show consumers what a dress looked like on an average person's figure, not Adriana Lima's. In the 18th century, French dressmakers made dolls in the shape of real women. They could design dresses on them and send them back and forth across Europe, so women could actually see what those clothes looked like and buy them. That changed when clothing required standard sizes for the military, and thus, standard models. Normalizing the representation of what women should look like, I think, would have a insanely beautiful effect on young girls. According to one study, one third of all straight size models report that they've had an eating disorder during their time as a model, and two thirds say they've been asked to lose weight by their agency. Each time I switched was a different struggle. I switched to the plus size division, but the funny thing is is that it was the same pressure, just in a different package. It was, oh well, the clients really prefer bigger girls, you know, you're on the smaller side. I had a little bag of padding that I brought with me in like a full body suit and you'd stuff it in your head. Your own pads? Yep, it's hilarious and awful. But funny when you see yourself in the mirror and you're like, um, my body's much bigger, but my wrists and my ankles are still mine. All this is trickling down to young women, and all women, who see these images every day and are made to believe that this is realistic. In the US, 53% of 13-year-old girls say they are unhappy with their bodies. And by the time they're 17, that number is 78%. Amber recently created a lingerie line that caters to women wearing non-traditional sizes, bridging the gap between standard and plus. I have put out requests for, for models and what is very difficult is to find what um, statistically is considered the average American woman, right? The average American woman is a 34 double D. She's not represented in the modeling industry at all. It didn't matter whether I was straight size or plus size, I was being altered in one way or another. I was either being airbrushed skinnier or being padded up and airbrushed bigger. It was never like, Oh, she's totally fine as she is. She's like, she's a beautiful woman. She's beautiful. 